If I am paying 30,000 rupees per acre per year lease and if I am able to do two crops in a year then the lease cost to produce one kilo of shrimps will be almost 19 rupees. Now here if you see like you increase the stocking density the lease cost per kilo is getting decreased they are indirectly proportional and why I am giving green color here is like this is somehow like you know in the budget as I said you know I set a budget like you know 20 rupees should be high everyone. Uh, so now let us see the strategies for profitability in shrimp farming for the state of Andhra Pradesh based on the trends in the early 2023. Uh, like earlier we have launched two videos where we have shown like you know uh, basically what are the uh, current uh, situation in the industry why we are not able to uh, sell the shrimp like that. And also the second video is how to produce 1 million metric tons in India and uh, how to market that one. So after that there is a, a lot of reaction from many farmers asking us uh, like you know uh, to go more into technical details and say how we can restrict the cost of production and how we can survive in particular situation in this market. So uh, I tried my best to throw some light onto the grey areas where we can sustain our culture and uh, uh, control the cost of production. So it's about me, uh, you all know me I think, like my name is Nagamurli and I'm an MFSC, PhD and MBA and I stay in Africa, I invest and also do consultancy in various African countries and also Middle East in both shrimp and fish. So that's basically about me. Basically, we want to identify or we want to say like, you know, smart farming rather than like, you know, mass farming, it's a smart farming. Who is the smart farmer? How do we identify a smart farmer? A smart farmer, he or she understands that shrimp farming is nowadays volatile because many other countries are supplying the same product to the buyers. So uh, uh, the industry is not uh, so uh, lucrative like before, it's volatile like uh, now. Therefore, even before he starts farming, he plans and budgets to have zero losses. He doesn't follow the tide, he sets his own goals. As I say, you know, after going into the culture, after, uh, uh, you know, buying, picking here and there and uh, without any uh, definite stocking density plan, without any infrastructure plan, you go randomly into the business, you will end up in making losses. But a smart farmer will have a clear cut idea like, okay, what should be my cost of production? What should be my selling price? What should be my break even point? And what should I do to do to achieve those goals? That is what a smart farmer will always plan and do. And we have enough number of smart farmers in our country who never go into losses I will say I will not say about success or failure of the crop I will, I'm only talking about not getting losses in this business so he doesn't follow the tide as as I said you know like not going along with the others he sets his own goals how to achieve them he plans now uh, let's go down into the business like you know what actually the smart farmers think about and how they plan their culture now, when we look at the major cost components of shrimp farming, like shrimp farming business, it's a business, right? When we are talking about a business, there are some input costs. So what are the major input costs? Pond lease cost, feed cost, post larvae, electricity, chemicals, probiotics and feed additives and other overhead cost. So these are the main major cost components involved in shrimp farming, which decides your profit or loss. Now here, you can see the overhead cost and salaries in a gray color. And uh, why this is because here no technician or consultant or an expert can control your overhead cost. Basically it's the farm owner and the farm manager or whoever the business head or the CEO of the farm should control this one. And overhead cost should be budgeted well before your crop and it has to be restricted in that otherwise all your minor profits or minute profits will end up in losing in overhead cost only. And the economics uh, are majorly dependent on one factor, like you have seen the six factors here. But uh, in this, the five factors, one factor or, or one trend will be affecting all of them. So let us see what was that one. It's all stocking density. It might be the lease cost, it might be the feed cost, it might be the PL cost, it might be the electricity cost, it might be the feed additive cost, whatever it is. All of them are depending upon the stocking density only. So let us see how it is influencing it. So what is the ideal stocking density and let's make some rough calculations on it. So first we will target the pond lease cost. Like if I take a pond on lease, 
and based on the lease amount, how much it is going to impact the cost of production of the shrimp at various harvest sizes. So let us see that one. Suppose you can, you can look at here, like I have compared between 8 per square meter, 15, 20, 25, 40, 50, 60 and 80 per square meter. All are in one acre pond and like all are at 150 days of culture. So at a low stocking density, you can expect 33, 33 grams in 150 days. In the same way, if you are doing 8 feet per square meter, it will not be more than 12 grams in 150 days. Suppose like, you know, this is a rough calculation where we are doing for the cost comparison and analysis. And survival, I have taken 75% all through. Actually, um, at a higher densities, maybe the survival will be lesser than the, the stocking density at a low, uh, like, you know, the survival at the low stocking density. But still, I try to maintain at the same point so that, you know, the comparison will be much better. So, output will be like, you know, you can see the stocking density into survival into average body weight. It gives me like, suppose per acre, if I am stocking 8 per square meter, and harvesting at 33 gram size, I will be ending up in harvesting nearly 800 kilos of shrimp. So now, if I am paying 30,000 rupees per acre per year lease, and if I am able to do two crops in a year, then the lease cost to produce one kilo of shrimp will be almost 19 rupees. Now, here if you see, like you increase the stocking density, the lease cost per kilo is getting decreased. They are indirectly proportional. And why I'm giving green color here is like this is somehow like, you know, in the budget, as I said, you know, I set a budget like, you know, 20 rupees should be the uh, uh, cost of uh, the impact of cost or the lease cost on producing one kilo shrimp. So at that particular stocking density and at, at, at these lease amounts, this thing is feasible, is in the budget. So if you see where this green ends, like if the green is ending somewhere here, like, you know, 17.4. That means overall, you can see uh, if the lease cost is less than 50,000 per acre, mostly your lease cost will be less than 20 rupees a kilo. This is the ideal cost, the lease cost. If you keep going on increasing your lease amounts to 75,000, 1 lakh or 1.5 lakh or even 2 lakhs, that will give a very negative impact on your cost of production, which you cannot sustain. Suppose you are you are paying like you know two lakhs lease, and you are doing like almost all uh, uh, like you know I will say forty per square meter, and then your cost of production will be almost all like you know forty two rupees to produce one kilo of shrimp. I don't think this is economically feasible or viable. Now let's look into the post larvae cost like. What will be the impact of the cost of PL on 1 kg production of shrimp? I have taken the stocking density same like before, pond size same like before, harvest size same like before, survival same like before and the output also same like before. Now if you see here, the PL cost per kg production if you are doing 8 per square meter and you are harvesting at 33 gram size, it will be only 14 rupees uh, per kilo of production. If it is 15, then 16.7, if it is 20, 18.7, which means like if you want to do an economical crop, your stocking density should not be more than 20 per square meter. Why not more than 20 per square meter? Because if your stocking density is less, your harvest sizes will be usually bigger. Your disease problems are lesser and your FCRs will be better. So that is why we will say, but here I did not compare all those. Only here we are comparing the cost of PL, which is well in the budget of 20 rupees. But today many farmers will say, like suppose you are buying PL at 35 price and you are harvesting at 100 count at a, at a survival of 60% or 70%. You can imagine how much money you are spending on the PL cost. And is that viable? Like uh, if you are spending 50 rupees uh, only on the PL cost to produce one kilo of shrimp, none of the prices can satisfy you. Uh, so you have to think like as you know, the stocking density and the viability. Now let's look at the feed cost. Okay, how much is the feed impacting on the cost of production? Now let us look at this table where the stocking density is the same like before, 815. And the pond size is same, uh, uh, harvest weight is same. Uh, 
and survival is same, output is same. But now here, if you are looking at it, like my expectation is like FCR, I want to get one is to one. And if the feed price is 85 rupees per kilo, like some somewhere in Andhra, you, you, it's available. I'm not just comparing the price like 85, it's not for debate, like now the price is 90 rupees or 95. I'm just doing a comparison to show like how the impact is going to be. So uh, again here, the green color is like visible. Like if I'm saying, one FCR is possible, that should be definitely a low stocking density at 8 per square meter. Above that, you may not get that FCR. If I'm talking about 1 is to 1, maybe 8 and 15 can uh, can be achieved. And if it is 1.2, 8, 15, 20, even 25, some farmers are achieving 1.2 FCR even in 25 per square meter also. So these are the feasible or you know possible FCRs at different stocking densities. And at that particular FCR, if I'm getting 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 1.1 or 1 is to 1.2, then the cost of production is like uh, 85 rupees, 93.5, 102 rupees, the feed cost, the feed cost to produce one kilo shrimp. So if you have to restrict, you have to restrict your feed cost to this 100 rupees per kilo, then only you can survive at the lowest market prices available in the market. So for that, now the indication is that if your stocking density is less than 25 per square meter, if your stocking density is as 8 or 15, it is more safe. So lower the stocking density, the better you have your survival in the market, in the business point of view. Now let's look at the energy cost, like uh, the electricity cost, how much it is going to impact on the cost of production. Here also the standards are same, 8, 15, 20, 1 acre per pond, 33 grams at uh, if we are talking 8, 8, 8 per square meter, 70% survival and the biomass is same. Now if you see, uh, here I have taken aeration cost at rupees 2.5 per kilowatt hour, which was the trend in the last year in Andhra. I'm not talking about Gujarat or any other places, but I think most of the places they are giving uh, the power at a subsidized price. But, I'm, but don't take this as the, I'm talking about for the whole India, I'm talking about the Andhra area. So if it is like rupees 2.5 per kilowatt hour, and if my thumb rule is like every 500 kilos of shrimp, if I, pro if I provide one HP aeration, then the cost of that aeration, here I have taken 20 hours average a day, 150 days. So if I do that, for that 792 kilos, if I am taking 500 kg 1 HP, it requires hardly, I think, uh, 1.2 per HP or like that. So the cost of production on that electricity will be only 11.2 rupees for 8, 8 square meter, 500 k, 1 HP for every 500 kilo. In the same way you come down, like you know, you see 400 kilos, 1 HP, 350 for every 350 kilos uh, biomass, 1 HP aeration, every 300 kilos biomass, 1 HP aeration, every 200 kilos biomass, 1 HP aeration. If you see, you can see the cost is increasing up to 28 rupees. Here, uh, here the green, what I have shown is like feasible. This is, this is feasible. And here the ones which I, which I, which I have uh, not shaded green is like not possible. That, that's not feasible at all. So here if you can see when I am saying restricting the aeration cost to 20 rupees per kilo, up to 300, 1 HP aeration for every 300 kilos of shrimp at 8, 15, 20, uh, 25 square me, uh, per square meter stocking density, you can restrict your uh, aeration cost. Again here, when I'm talking about aeration cost, like, you know, some farms, uh, they unnecessarily give a lot of aeration to the shrimp. Uh, one reason, like, you know, basically the reason for everybody will be one, like uh, our DO levels are bad in the morning. Your DO levels are bad in the morning, it's not directly related to the, your aeration, your efficiency of, uh, your how much efficient aeration you are giving. Suppose your RPM, uh, the RPM of your aerators are not good, definitely the oxygen dissolving capacity will not be good. So how much, uh, horsepower like how much kilowatt you can you spend on aeration it's totally useless if the rpm of your aerators is not good and secondly the bod and cod levels of your pond environment if they are bad definitely or if they are high definitely your do budget will be high and definitely you need to run more aerators and you need to give more power there also you will be ending up in an economical loss so please keep that also in the mind when you are planning your aeration budgets now let us see the conclusion like you know why uh, what are the main factors which we need to consider for a successful or economically successful culture now if the pond lease like if you are discussing about the cap on the pond lease the budget on the pond lease it should not be more than 20 kg rupees 20 kg uh, rupees 20 per kilo production so the lease amount should not be impacting the cost of production more than rupees 20 per kilo 
and the PL cost also same, not more than 20 per kilo. Feed cost also like not more than 100 rupees per kilo. And aeration cost not more than 20 rupees per kilo. And feed and additives cost also like same, like 20 rupees per kilo. So these are the, you know, uh, the benchmarks for your economical crop. And to achieve them, what it has to be done, we already have shown in the previous slides. So my suggestion or like, you know, a, a smart thinking is like, don't culture in the lease ponds where the lease is more than 50,000 rupees per acre. That if like, until 50,000 per acre, it is okay. Even 8, 15 per square meter, 20, 25 per square meter, you can culture and you can other, all other factors will be well in control. If, if you are taking a pond with a very high lease, definitely you are forced to do higher stocking density. And when you are forced to do higher stocking density, all other costs will increase and which will be ending up in an economical loss. So please restrict yourself for a ponds uh, less than 50,000 acres per year lease. And don't stock more than 25 pieces per square meter at this current scenario. Considering the feed cost, don't stock more than 25 per square meter and restrict the FCR to less than 1 is to 1.2. As I said, you know, the more the stocking density, the higher the culture period, the lesser the output uh, size or the average body weight at harvest, ultimately the FCR will be high. So, if you want to restrict your culture in a, in a specified budget, then don't stock more than 25 per square meter. Ultimately, your FCR will be good at 1 is to 1.2. And also, immediately, please don't raise the question in your mind like, is this possible? Plenty farmers are getting 1.2 FCR in a successful crop in Manamai. So, that's not an impossible task. And considering the aeration cost, if you follow the thumb rules to maintain the cost, you we can stock up to 50 per square meter also. And again, 1 HP aeration for every 300 kilos biomass. If you follow this thumb rule and if you maintain it, definitely the aeration cost will be always less than rupees 20 per kilo. It will not impact you a lot. Because some people are complaining the aeration cost is coming nearly 30, 40, even 50 also. So that is your management issue, but not a, a, a problem by, by the government or any other, but any other person. So you have to manage it. And if you follow the above budgets, your cost of production before overhead cost will reach nearly 150 to 160. Maybe if I add, uh, you know, the feed additives, another 20, like 180 rupees. And finally, if I add uh, uh, OH cost also, it will be going up to 190 or 200. Still, why we are, what we, what we are telling is like you know not like making profits not not making losses not making losses so it might be rupees 200 per kilo per 100 count or anything still you will not make loss that is what we want to explain through all the all these slides that how to not make losses how to not make losses and how to not to quit from the aquaculture Thank you once again. So if you have any questions, you can contact me on my numbers or you can uh, WhatsApp me also on this. I will be uh, available for any type of query or explanation on the factors, whatever other tables, whatever I have shown. Thank you.